Chopping down trees here like this is illegal. This man's wife holds watch to make sure they aren't discovered. This land belongs to the Rwandan government. Even though it's under protection, there are few trees left. People here need wood for cooking. Most people have to buy their wood, and it's expensive. Josephine Uwe Ngoma lives in a village about 60 kilometers from the capital, Kigali. Almost all her life, she was using the traditional cooking method. It requires three big rocks and a lot of wood. On an open stove like this, cooking a pot of beans takes hours. We used to suffer a lot. I used to send the children looking for wood. Instead of going to school, they would be looking for wood. Using a traditional cooking fire is very labor-intensive. Josephine Ui Ngoma has seven children. Beans are a staple in the local diet, and they take hours to cook properly. But now there's an alternative. Out here in the countryside, these women are working for the Safer Rwanda organization. The metal they are using comes from Germany, and the stoves they're building were also developed there. The stoves use very little wood. 20,000 of them have already been sold in Rwanda. The staff are all women. Many women in Rwanda live under difficult circumstances, and work is badly needed. It's one of the legacies of the Rwandan genocide of 1994, when more than a million people were killed in the war between the Hutu and Tutsi people. Uh, it really affected them so much, to the extent that most of the women were, became widows, uh, no husbands to, to take care of them. They had orphans to take care of. This has been the, the main challenge to the women especially, of 90, who survived the 1994 genocide. Even today, there are still more women than men in Rwanda. They bear much of the burden of daily life, including the cooking. Alan Mubiru from the Atmosphere Environmental Organization spends part of his time visiting women in the villages. He explains that the stoves will make their work easier, save wood, and help protect the environment. For a rural farmer, a new stove represents about two or three days of earnings, but the investment pays off. A bundle of wood used to last four to six days, but now it lasts for three weeks. By using efficient stoves, you economize on the amount of wood that you would use. Every time you burn wood, uh, there's a lot of CO2 that goes into the atmosphere. So by using less wood, you emit less carbon dioxide. Approximately each one of uh, these stoves, like this one, saves up, uh, around four tons of CO2 per year. Rwanda's population has been growing rapidly. Today, some 11 million people live in Rwanda, making it one of the world's most densely populated countries. To survive, people here need food and firewood. Under difficult conditions, environmental protection often takes a back seat. Signs of that are evident everywhere. In the spring, the land looks lush and fertile, but weather conditions are growing more extreme. Part of Alan Mubiru's job is educating people on the importance of environmental protection. Illegal logging, he explains, will only make people's lives here more difficult. You cannot predict with the certainty when the, the plowing season is supposed to start, when the harvesting is supposed to start. Sometimes the rain is too much that the crops, instead of growing, they are just rotting in the gardens. Or sometimes the rain is not enough and the crops are just dying or wilting before they can even produce the fruits. This farmer is gathering leftover twigs. She already has a new stove, so one bundle of firewood will carry her through several weeks of cooking. That's a big benefit, especially since none of the trees here can be logged legally. 